Hello, today we are again testing the VTG5 CPU cooler here. Uh, we've currently got it on a i7-3930K today, which is a 6-core Sandy Bridge um, X79 based CPU. Um, it's on a EVGA X79 dark motherboard, and we've got 16GB of HyperX Fury in dual channel, uh, quad channel rather. And uh, you can see in the BIOS here, it is idling around 50 degrees Celsius. Um, we have 1.25 volts set in the BIOS, and it is at 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, we've got the memory set to 1.65 volts, um, and the VSA and VCCIO set to 1.2 volts. Uh, now, memory wise, We've got the memory running at 10, 11, 10, 32 with a 1T command rate and 204 on the TRFC. Um, the memory is running at 1866 if I didn't say that already. So um, yeah, the idle temperature is pretty hot but we will go into uh, Windows and uh, run a quick couple of tests. Now this cooler flew um, with an i5-3570K uh, which you can see in my previous video and uh, we got to 1.4 volts at like 4. Point, what was it? 1.45 volts, 4.8 gigahertz on that CPU with this cooler and it never went above um, 80 degrees C the maximum temperature we got was actually 75 degrees Celsius um, with both the fans on so I thought I'd put it on a better CPU or a, mo a more powerful CPU rather to um, see how it performed now instead of using Cinebench because we're on a X79 platform with quad channel we're actually going to run um, this hardware bot X265 benchmark here which is a bit heavier and this is more like of a, a rendering type workload um, it's obviously X265 so it's very very heavy on the CPU um, now we've got 1.25 volts set in the BIOS um, but it'll probably go up to 1.28 ish during the benchmark run so we'll start it. You can see once it's um, in the OS, the temperatures were idling about 30, sort of mid 30 degrees. And uh, this is obviously with the speed step off because it's running at full speed and full voltage all the time. So it's now um, doing that 4K benchmark. So hopefully it'll pass. So there we go, the benchmark is finished. Now the fan does ramp up um, quite high on this EVGA board once it passes 60 degrees, so the fan curve is quite aggressive. It does run almost full speed most of the time, even at just 4.2 GHz. But our maximum temperatures uh, during that run, which was just over uh, four and a half minutes, was 69 degrees C, so we still have another 11 degrees of headroom. So we're going to overclock a bit further, see if it can handle 4.4 uh, gigahertz uh, at 1.3 volts in the BIOS, which we'll have to see what that is um, once we get back into Windows again. Now for mounting um, this CPU cooler on this board, um, it's pretty similar to the um, installation on the 1150 board which I did before I don't know if you can see just down there but it's basically the same process apart from the back plate on a uh, socket 2011 board is already installed so you don't need to install the back plate yourself it's already there so all you do is put your screwdriver through the top of your heatsink up there which you can't see because I'm zoomed in but you put your screwdriver through the top of there then screw it in. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple really.
that is literally it. Uh, obviously do that outside your case before you put your RAM in and everything just to make your life a bit easier. So now we'll uh, move it back up to 4.4 gigahertz and uh, see if we can get a bit of extra performance out of it. So this is 4.4 on all cores, we're going to go up to 1.3 volts uh, in the BIOS here and that is all we're going to change. Now this board hasn't actually been featured on the channel before, it's a fairly recent purchase um, is this X79 Dark and to be fair so far I haven't liked it anywhere near as much as uh, my old Asus Rampage 4 formula which I used to have before it broke uh, it does stuff like it's doing now where when you save and reset it won't post but then if you press reset it usually goes and posts after you've pressed reset which is kind of annoying and you'll hear it beep so it's posting now or it's already posted it's actually starting up already look um, but when you save and exit even on the latest BIOS for some reason it gets stuck on one postcode and you have to press the reset button so overclocking on this board is pretty annoying um, also when the RAM frequency gets too fast and it hangs on the post it will just sit there on the post readout forever it doesn't like reset itself or retry or anything um, and you have to end up clearing the CMOS basically because even if you spam the reset button unlike on a ASRock board where it would um, if you press the reset button a load of times it would either boot up in a safe mode or reset for you then um, you know this one doesn't do that so you have to end up resetting the CMOS which is really annoying and it does do that quite a lot. In terms of features it's pretty good, it has dual NICs um, plenty of USB ports, has onboard Bluetooth so in terms of that it's pretty decent but uh, it does have four slots as well which is kind of annoying and it has this uh, sort of 90 degree um, 24 pin connector, a load of SATA ports but to be fair I'm, I'm not too impressed with the board it is um, a little bit disappointing so far if I'm honest anyway we're back in at 4.4 now so we'll give it a go at 4.4 gigahertz and uh, see what we get so again we're going to run it in 4k on the 4k preset just in normal priority because um, obviously if we change the priority to like high or real time then we can't the temperature monitoring software um, doesn't actually work which isn't very helpful so you can hear the fans ramp up almost right away uh, unlike on the i5 where it took a while to get warm on this CPU it's drawing a lot more power um, there's a fair bit of warm air coming out the back of it so um, yeah it does, it does spin up quite a bit more and it is a little bit louder um, this CPU does draw a similar amount of power and heat as a, a 1366 Xeon so if you wanted to run this uh, cooler on that platform you'd be looking at a similar amount of heat but again you'd need a back plate for that because I don't think 1366 pods came with a back plate so uh, I think a 6 core 12 thread CPU is probably going to be where this cooler starts to fall over and obviously once you get up to the 8 and 10 core CPUs like you've got an X99 you probably wouldn't be buying a £25 cooler but for those older Xeons or uh, an older i7 like this which can be picked up uh, for a fairly reasonable price now um, this cooler would um, is potentially a decent buy for you really so anyway I'll let the rest of this run and uh, we'll see what the temperatures get to So it's uh, finished at 4.4 gigahertz, and as you can see, the hottest core is still at 76 degrees Celsius. So uh, that's not too bad there. 
Uh, obviously the voltage was getting quite a bit higher than last time. Uh, obviously because we put it up 0.5 volts. So uh, I'll just write a note of this while it's still on the screen. Interestingly, the uh, speed step seems to have turned itself back on it, kept dipping down to 12 there, which is uh, interesting. So, going up um, this much voltage, which was... I actually forgot to take a note of what voltage it was <laughs> under load there. See what it settled on. We'll go with 1.341 volts. Yeah. So that's nearly 1.35 volts. It's getting to 76C. So I'm I'm guessing at 4.6 gigahertz on uh, nearly 1.4 volts. We are going to reach the limit of the cooler, um, which is obviously going to be um, about. 82 degrees, but only on the hottest core, you have to remember all the others um, should be okay. So uh, we'll have a go and see. Obviously if you're just um, running games on a system like this, um, it's probably going to run um, like 2 to 5 degrees cooler than it will under this kind of load. Um, because it won't be at a hundred percent, like pegged at a hundred percent speed all of the time, which will obviously give you a little bit more headroom. And obviously, if the if the thing's in a case, um, it's probably gonna run a little bit warmer than it will on my open test bench anyway. But we'll see. So it did actually boot up when I saved an exit that time, which is quite nice. Well, it posted anyway. We'll see if it boots up. I haven't really tested um, this CPU too much in terms of the 4K benchmark with the quad channel memory, because um, I don't usually uh, run this benchmark very often. It is very heavy, and this is also one of the few times that I actually run quad channel memory as well because I usually uh, run dual channel even on the X99 and X79 platforms so there we go 4.6 gigahertz in windows and our temperatures are idling around 40 degrees on the hottest core so that's not too bad see if it overheats this time see what this cooler is really made of now so we're getting up to 1.399 volts which is practically 1.4 volts and um, we'll see what the voltage settles at it should settle around 1.388 or 1.399 I'm guessing looks like it's bouncing between the two it's just over 1.4 volts there. We're going to call it 1.399, I think. Because that's probably what it's going to average out at here. So it's finished at 4.6. And uh, as you can see, it actually reached 86 degrees Celsius on two cores, 85 on core 0 and 83 on the others so that is probably um, where the limit of this cooler is it is a bit too much is 1.4 volts on a 6 core i7 but it's still like a, pr a really really decent result I don't think a Hyper 2112 Evo would be able to uh, even pass this test a Hyper 2112 Evo would probably be getting uh, well into the 90s and uh, thermal throttling at this point so uh, it has done pretty well really um, I think that is pretty much it for this testing um, I might just do a quick 
run of uh, Cinebench for you here at 4.6 or we might even be able to do 4.7 at this voltage so we will go back into the BIOS and um, see if it will run at 4.7 and uh, run a bit of Cinebench and see what the temps are when we run Cinebench a couple of times as well because that's probably um, more realistic temperatures to if you're doing a gaming load whereas that was more like a uh, rendering kind of workload which was very heavy and obviously quite long so we'll give it a go at 4.7 we'll see if it will post and boot up first that would be nice so we're in now 4.7 gigahertz we'll see if this runs without blue screening Fans ramping up already, 70 degrees Celsius, 73, and it has got an error, so it's not quite fully stable in uh, Cinebench, even at these clocks. Um, if it was under a water cooler, um, or a bigger air cooler, maybe keeping it down at like 65 degrees, it might be a little bit more stable but it's getting into the sort of mid 70s there and it doesn't quite seem stable I know this CPU can actually do uh, 4.75 under water cooling at uh, this kind of voltage but obviously the temperatures are kept more like uh, 40 degrees so obviously that, that helps quite a bit with the temperature scaling there it might pass this time though by the looks of it so it's not fully stable but there you go it's got over 1200 CB so this in conclusion uh, seems though this is probably going to be the final video with this cooler uh, it's definitely a decent cooler if you have a mainstream platform i7 or i5 this thing should um, be able to pretty much max it out uh, quite happily um, if you've got a 6 core i7 or a Xeon CPU on the X79 or X99 platform uh, you can definitely still use it and overclock a little bit but you won't be able to get 100% um, of what your CPU can do so uh, yeah I think that's about it for this video um, if you want to see any more videos or the i5 testing on this cooler or the installation um, you can check out my other videos which are obviously on my channel and uh, if not then that's it for this one, goodbye.